Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In this episode I'm gonna continue where I left off with the Amiga 600 uh, restoration project and uh, if you saw that video you saw that I uh, did some uh, cleaning and then I did some uh, recapping of the electrolyte capacitors that didn't go all that well. I had to remove uh, the keyboard connector and I ripped uh, one of the traces there. So I'm gonna start off by repairing that. But uh, first let's take a look at uh, the case and see how uh, the retro brighting went. So the case was kind of yellowed on uh, the upper part and on the side of uh, the lower part and uh, yeah as you can see it turned out uh, quite nice. Uh, the original color was this on the underside and uh, yeah as you can see the top it's almost uh, as white as the underside. Maybe still a little bit of um, shadow <laughs> or a little bit grayish tint but uh, I'm pretty pleased with this and this was only using the sun outside no chemicals I think I had it out for around uh, 30 hours but uh, it was just sitting there I didn't have to wait for it so uh, yeah no problems with that and uh, the keyboard uh, the, the keys were very yellowed um, and as you can see they look perfect now. And for these I actually used hydrogen peroxide cream. Uh, yeah, I think I had them in that for uh, around five hours and um, then I had them outside in the sun afterwards. But now let's take a look at the motherboard and uh, in the part one video, if you saw that, I did replace all uh, the electrolyte capacitors. Uh, these uh, two here was a pain in the butt because they are very close to the keyboard connector and I initially tried to remove them without taking the connector off because I had a hard time uh, removing it uh, in fact. But then I ripped uh, this pad on this one so in order to repair that I needed the space and I did some more effort in removing this connector and uh, yeah it got a little bit uh, heat damage uh, you see it's uh, black around the pins and and it became a little bit deformed so uh, I actually decided not to uh, put this back so I got a new connector from uh, amigostore.eu uh, if you haven't visited that store, I really recommend it for Amigo stuff. Uh, they have all kinds of uh, parts and upgrades and uh, really quick uh, shipping. So uh, yeah, brand new connector. But, and here's a big but, <laughs> you saw in my part one video that I actually managed to rip off uh, one of the traces to one of the pins. It's this one because this connector was really hard to get out. I used a lot of um, hot air to heat it up from the backside and uh, then when it finally came out uh, one of uh, the traces was uh, ripped off so I need to repair that first. So if we take a look, a closer look here, it's um, this pin uh, number two here or this hole. There was a trace going from that via or that hole um, over here and it's ripped off right there. So I need some way to connect to this trace that goes to this pin on uh, this chip. I mean, I could run a wire um, from this pin through one of these holes to the back side and to the actual pin. Now that trace is uh, clear. Uh, I've also got a little bit of the other trace, but that's not a problem. I'm gonna cover this with the solder mask afterwards. Yeah. 
So I learn a lot by watching uh, North Ridge Fix on YouTube. You should really check out that channel and he does a lot of uh, microscopic repairs but he has a good uh, uh, microscope with a camera and uh, he uses a lot of these repair pad strips and I got some here. This is probably not the same quality as he got but uh, I used this in part one on repairing this so I'm going to try and repair that trace with the same. So uh, sorry about the glare over here I need a good light here and uh, yeah this is a little piece of that strip it is uh, conducted only on one side because it has glue on the other side so I need it with the glue side up and uh, yeah I think maybe if I push it down through the hole and then solder it onto uh, the little trace uh, then I can make this work it is a little bit uh, wide but I think that should work maybe I should try and cut it in half but first I'm gonna thin uh, the trace and I'm using a little bit of drop of flux that was way too much use more flux yeah I think I got it thinned then I tried to position this little strip. I made a thinner one. Have it down through the hole and uh, want to position it over that uh, original trace. This is so small, not really sure if this is gonna work. We'll see. All right, I have added some more flux, a little bit thicker type, and uh, let's see if we can attach this. I think it is there, it is soldered on. Gonna clean up a little bit, take a look. Okay, so that's the fix. Now I'm gonna insert the connector and solder on just that pin to test if I have a continuity on the back side. And I actually measured the continuity from this side to the chip and it is okay. I had a hard time filming at the same time, but uh, yeah, trust me. So now I'm gonna solder this pin first and check again and then uh, the rest. And this time I use a lot of flux because uh, that's what uh, Alex in Northridge Fix does and <laughs> what he says is uh, correct, I guess. So that's soldered in. I'm gonna do a little bit um, of more continuity testing. Okay, I'm gonna solder the rest and uh, yeah, hopefully this connector is good. All right, I checked the connector and it uh, looks to be uh, connected on all pins to the correct places. So uh, next I'm gonna assemble the keyboard and uh, yeah, I cleaned it up. As you can see, it's uh, looking very nice now and uh, all the springs. I'm gonna spray a little bit of WD-40 on the springs uh, just so that they get a protective layer from corrosion. It's very easy to uh, lose one of those springs <laughs> and if you lose it, you never find it. That's my experience. So then it's just a matter of placing all the springs and keys and I have a little uh, reference card here. Uh, look how yellow this was. <laughs> it was actually like that. Uh, <laughs> thing you need to notice if like this, it actually looks like one spring, but it is actually two. If you if you don't notice that, then you will place two springs instead of one and you will have a hard time <laughs> afterwards. I promise you that I have had that experience.
I finally managed to turn on the microphone, so final thing, the keyboard. Looking good, doesn't it? So now I'm gonna use that uh, 303 protectant uh, on the machine itself. Make it a little bit more shiny and protected. All right, time to test. And uh, before that, I just wanna ask you, uh, did you have an Amiga back in the day or do you still have an Amiga? <laughs> Let me hear in the comments, please. Does it still work? Yes, sure enough, it works. Well, I kind of anticipated that. Let's run the Amiga test kit. Okay, let's see what we got. The mouse is working. Keyboard I know is working. It has one megabyte of RAM as expected. No extended memory. Let's uh, just test the memory a little while. Yes, it's doing its job. So for the keyboard test, I said I know it's working, but <laughs> I am not really sure actually. Uh, I need to test all the keys to be sure. So here's the keyboard test. Yes, looking fine. Don't have to push very hard. All keys work. Del 2. <laughs> Audio, nothing. Hmm. Okay, I get no audio out of this machine. That's a bummer. Okay, so I looked back at the video, the unboxing video for this machine, and in fact it had uh, sound then, so obviously I have done something wrong here. And uh, yeah, just gonna run a few more tests, and then I will obviously have to take a look at why there's no uh, audio. Okay, so the only thing I can think of is I did something wrong with uh, the two capacitors for uh, the audio filtering. So uh, I have to check up on that before I continue. So I connected the TV to the TV modulator RF out and uh, there's a sound. So, all right, so I have done a mistake in my recapping. Obviously I have pulled out uh, the schematics and uh, this is the audio filters um, components and uh, schematics for that. And I'm pretty sure there is something wrong here. And here we can see that the audio left and right comes out of uh, the Paula and into um, four op amps uh, and then out to the right and left connectors. Uh, also have the schematics for uh, the modulator part and uh, here the audio comes out from um, another chip and uh, to the modulator. Okay, the audio filters enlarged, so I'm gonna check a little bit around here and uh, use the oscilloscope. So my initial thought was that uh, I have done something wrong here because these two capacitors uh, are on uh, the connectors. If we take a look at the schematics, don't know if you can see this very well, but uh, it's uh, these two caps here. And they are right in front of uh, the connectors, just as they are here on the board. However, the op amp U15, it's this chip. It contains four uh, op amps, operational amplifiers that amplifies the audio signal to the correct output level. And uh, of course I have replaced these caps here and uh, used some heat obviously here. So something might have gone wrong here. So here's the op amps for uh, the audio and I replaced those two caps and this transistor, I think it's a transistor, uh, has been skewed a little bit. Maybe there's a bad contact there. Okay, let me try and uh, take some measurements with the oscilloscope. First, I'm just gonna check some continuity between the chips and uh, yeah, from Paula, pin 13 and 14, uh, it goes into the op amps on pin nine and 13. So let me just check. This is uh, Paula U3 and uh, yeah, pin 13 is this. 
So this should go to pin uh, one of the pins here. Yeah, that's pin nine, so that's correct. And uh, pin 14 to pin uh, 13. Yep, so that part is okay. I have started the machine and I have set it to a sound of 500 hertz. So now I'm gonna check with the oscilloscope and see where the signal stops. I'm gonna start by checking the audio out on these uh, op amps. It's pin one and pin seven. If they are right, then we don't have to concentrate on this circuit uh, to the left here. Yes, and look at that, a perfect uh, sine wave. <laughs> okay, so it's all right there. And pin seven, this is a seven pin, so it's that one, yeah. Look at that, perfect sign there as well. So the issue must be further out. So we measured um, pin one and seven, so there must be something wrong here. So it's uh, really not easy to trace uh, the signals on these kinds of boards, but uh, using the Amiga PCB Explorer, I find it easier. So the signal from uh, the op amp over there goes um, here, and it comes up in this V, and there is a solid uh, sine wave, and then it just goes up here and directly to the capacitor, and uh, yeah, it tells me obviously the issue is here with uh, those caps that I have um, recapped, and uh, there was a rip trace there, and I fixed it, and. Uh, Obviously I have uh, done something wrong, maybe connected uh, the fix to the wrong trace, <laughs> not really sure. So um, yeah, these caps needs to come out again and <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that because then I have to take out this uh, connector again. So that's a real pain in the butt, but um, I just have to do it. I can't see any other solution. It's near impossible to uh, take these out, the caps, and um, yeah, try to repair something in this uh, narrow space. Okay, I did a little bit more uh, tracing here, and uh, yeah, the problem seems to be this C334. Uh, there is no continuity between that pad and that uh, via that goes to a resistor on the back side. Uh, however, this side, um, the C324, uh, the red colored uh, trace, is okay. Strange thing is if um, this channel is okay, uh, then why was there no sound on both channels? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna remove uh, the connector now and um, take out the capacitors and check it out. I finally managed to get uh, the connector out, uh, however I think uh, it suffered a little bit more damage. Uh, I don't know what it is with uh, this Amiga board and uh, the, this connector, it's almost impossible to desolder. I used uh, hot air in the end to get it out. I also managed to get the two caps out. Uh, without damaging them and I use two soldering irons for that and here we see the damage from uh, last time the previous video uh, where the pad was ripped and I assumed that this pad was connected to that small uh, via there but uh, probably that's not correct so I'm gonna check with the uh, schematics. Well, in fact, on this uh, PCB layout, we can see that uh, this pad is actually connected to uh, that via. This point here should then be connected to pin uh, seven on the op amp, and it is not. That's why we have no sound. There's no signal from uh, the output of the amplifier to the plus of this capacitor. Uh, that's something that's impossible to fix without a bodge wire, so I'm gonna make a bodge wire from here over to here. And for this missing pad, I'm gonna try and fix that. This pad 
goes via this trace over here to this point here, this via, and there's no connection there. But if I try just outside on the actual trace, yeah, there we have continuity. So there's a break between uh, the trace here and the pad. Whew. So that was a lot of uh, issues. Maybe something happened when I heated up uh, this connector and something happened in between the layers. I don't know, but uh, I have to fix this by some bodges. So this is a really painful job, I guess. I was not expecting uh, all these problems, but uh, that's something that can happen. Obviously, you learn by it. <laughs> so I guess this video turns into a long video. It simply doesn't seem like this hole is able to take any solder and it just uh, couldn't handle any heat as well. So need to do something else. I'm gonna yeah, solder in the caps and then I can solder a wire from here to the chip. And this one needs a bodge over to the neighboring trace, but uh, maybe I, if I just drag some solder over there. But at least it is uh, connected now. Okay, I'm gonna solder in this now. So that side's okay. So instead of trying to fix uh, this pad with uh, connecting to that trace, which I doubt will go well, I'm gonna do the same with this. Just place a wire on the plus and then solder in the other. Okay, it's there. Question now, is there continuity between uh, the cap and that point? Nope, doesn't seem like it is. So that little fix probably just uh, went away when I soldered it in. Uh, no, nothing. So I'm gonna fiddle with this until I get it right and then I'll be back. All right, the caps are in place. I fixed that issue with a little wire going from uh, the pad over to this little pad here. Should be solid. So there really is something wrong with this uh, board. I mean, these pins on this ship, they won't take solder and um, it smells fishy when I try. So um, I guess that is because some of the <laughs> electrolyte from the capacitor has leaked and uh, yeah, affecting how the metal works. It's really, really annoying. So many problems with this Amiga 600. It's almost like I regret I started with this, but uh, yeah, since the caps have leaked, it had to be done. Only I'm obviously not uh, skilled enough to do it. <laughs> Let's try again, see if we can uh, get the wire here. Yeah, I think now it uh, is a bit better. Yeah, still smells uh, fishy. I don't know fish, I eat it a lot. <laughs> and the other one goes on uh, pin number one. Refuses to take any solder. That's the two bush wires. Hopefully they will stay there and not move a lot. So I connected the motherboard uh, back to the TV and I inserted the North and South game. Let's see if we get any sound out of this now. And um, yeah, I forgot to <laughs> hook up the audio connect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Audio is fixed on both channels. Not the prettiest job, but it works, at least for me. The never-ending nightmare continues, I know, with this connector. And um, yeah, three of these uh, pins here are uh, not connected anymore. They are, two of those were ripped 
off and then the third one I actually cut when I try to file the traces. Traces are so thin. Or these run, these three run directly to this chip. So I'm gonna fix that with uh, some more botch wires then. <laughs> This is not fun at all, but I managed to um, put three bodge wires here. I think they are pretty good, uh, solid solar. So what I'm gonna do now is to place the other end of the wire down through the hole so that it connects with um, the pin on the contact. Hopefully the connector survived this uh, carnage. <laughs> so if I can make it go through, then I will be happy. Obviously it won't be flush with the PCB, but uh, that's a smaller issue, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty flush. Uh, these are very thin wires. Little electrical tape to keep everything in place. Using a lot of flux here. So now the little wires uh, stick out here with uh, the pins and should uh, be connected and it should all be good, hopefully. I hooked up the keyboard and uh, holding it in my hand and uh, it works. Almost. Okay, so seems like one uh, column of uh, keys doesn't work. That means that uh, only one of the pins are not connected, so I need to figure out uh, what that is. Alright, so we know that one uh, line of uh, characters on the keyboard does not work, and uh, I could of course try and measure all the different ports on the keyboard controller. Uh, and uh, measure the continuity to all the pins on the keyboard connector but they are on the back side and that will be quite hard uh, actually and uh, instead i just use the schematics to take a look so this is the schematics for um, the keyboard tail going to uh, the 6570 keyboard controller and here we see all the different lines to all the different pins on the connector but still you don't know which of uh, these lines are connected to which uh, keys on the keyboard but uh, fear not the last slide here on the schematics is uh, this one and here we see all the different uh, key mappings so we had the line with f6 8 i k and the comma and that's uh, this one here so this is then pin 22 no it's pin 23 it's easy to uh, miss <laughs> by one when you have all those parallel lines pin 23 is the problematic one so pin 23 is uh, this one the fourth one from this side i marked it there and uh, yeah, in fact, I measured and there was no uh, contact between that pin and the pin on the controller chip. So I'm going to try and resolder uh, that particular pin. I use a lot of flux and then try to add some additional um, solder. Probably the solder won't go down through the hole. I was forced to make a botch wire onto that pin as well. Um, Probably pin 32 is uh, the trace is broken off uh, the pin, uh, the hole on this side. So in order to fix that, I would have to remove the contact again, which I don't want to do. So I just fed it through this hole. This hole, I think, is for uh, a mount for uh, the hard drive, which I'm not going to use anyway. Let's see now. Is it fixed? It was F6, 8, I and K. Yeah. Okay, so now this keyboard works. There's even one line for the caps lock. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, it is uh, functioning. So this keyboard and this machine now works. 
Okay, so that was quite an ordeal to get this machine working again. And <laughs> yeah, I feel that it was selection in how to destroy an Amiga 600, but uh, I got it working eventually. And uh, yeah, this machine goes into my collection. I'm not gonna sell it to anyone. So hopefully it will work. Um, and if it stops functioning, maybe those bodges uh, get loose again, I can easily fix that. I know the machine fully works and I am ready to uh, install some extras on it and uh, see if we can uh, get it up and running with uh, some games and software. The machine has a 68,000 CPU and uh, Kickstart 2.0 and uh, it only has a floppy disk drive which is uh, hanging loose outside and uh, but this is actually a A600 HD, so it came with a hard drive. There is no hard drive, so I'm gonna fix that. There's just one screw holding um, the motherboard to the case. All right, so here I got a few goodies for the Amiga and uh, I have a 3.1 ROM I'm gonna insert. And I also got the um, a compact flash to IDE adapter and um, yeah, Amiga Workbench, a compact flash, hard drive, two of those, <laughs> and this is uh, four gigs, I think. Yeah, four gigabyte compact flash. So I'm gonna insert that and check it out. I'll start with um, the Kickstart ROM. Okay. It's quite stuck there. Oh man, it sits tight in there. <laughs> Here's the new one, it's from Amiga Forever and these uh, ROMs are actually licensed. So I have the license and I have taped over the key so that you don't steal it from me. There's actually one pin more on the sockets um, than the chip so you just mount it all the way to the right. Okay, let's turn on and see if it works. Yeah, there you go. ROM 3.1. Then it's the hard drive and it should be a plug and play. We'll see. The hard drive goes into the 44 pin ID connector there. And uh, yeah, I have a little extension cable and uh, the adapter. So there you go and you insert um, the compact flash card into that slot and then this cable. Just need to find out what's pin 1 and pin 1 is marked there and uh, the red line should go to pin 1. It has to go like this I think. Now it's in. <laughs> I didn't notice, but uh, this actually has a contact right there on the PCB, so no need for this uh, extension cable. So it can't fit that way, so I guess it goes this way then. It can't fit that way either, so... <laughs> so this is kind of poor design, I guess. Um, yeah, it actually fits, just me digging around here. It's right there. I'm gonna turn on the machine. Let's test. There's a small LED there that should light up and show the disk activity. Yeah, look at that. Red light. <laughs> and yes, it came up right away into Workbench. Okay, let's time it now. How quickly does it boot into Workbench? Turning on. Boom. Yeah, that was, uh, I think it was like 13 or 14 seconds. <laughs> okay, here's Workbench. And as you can see, this is an unexpanded uh, Amiga when it comes to uh, memory. It only has uh, 437K free and zero other mem. And uh, yeah, that is kind of a limitation if you upgrade to the later Workbenches because then you have a very little 
available RAM and uh, for example there's already one game and a few demos here and uh, yeah I can't run them because I have too little RAM if I try to run this battle squadron yeah can't allocate shadow mem let's try some of the demos and you can see already we are down to only 356k and uh, that's by just opening a few um, windows okay and this requires a 68020 so can't run that can't allocate shadow man okay i'm gonna complete this machine now and uh, I'm happy to be finished with this project actually it was a little bit painful but uh, can't do anything with that <laughs> all right I think that completes this video I'm just gonna try and play some games on this machine see if uh, I can have some fun problem is with the newer ROMs many of the old games uh, doesn't work uh, that's my impression at least <laughs> Alright, let's check it out. Okay, I have the gear. Manual gear on this. Yeah, this is a nice racing game. I remember it from back in the day. Checkpoint. All right, I think that wraps it up for this video. I uh, am gonna upgrade the memory on this. I've been waiting a little bit to do that because I have a Mega 1200 that I'm gonna do some uh, upgrades and restoration on as well and uh, you'll see that one coming up later but for now the machine is uh, working it's been restored uh, looking nice i am pleased with that it didn't go as well as i hoped i really made a mess out of it but uh, it turned out okay in the end i hope <laughs> so hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something and uh, just want to say thanks for watching and uh, thanks to my patreons uh, see you bye bye